Hello, everybody, and welcome to this video. I think those are the first words I've said all day. That's weird. That's weird. And now this is weird. <clears throat> because today we're going to be going over the Harlan Ellison story, I Have No Mouth But I Must Scream, which is great because it's technically still September, so I, I'm doing the right thing here. This story is great, and I have a very strange relationship with it. I knew of this story for years because um, my dad had a like a little paperback short story collection of this book. Actually, let me do this so this makes it easier. Nope, we'll go this way. Yeah, so I'll, I'll put it right here. And um, I don't know what year this one came out, but it was, it's one of my dad's favorite stories. So it, he had this on display. So for years, I saw this. It was like face out on his bookcase. And the image on the front, at first, isn't very terrifying at all. But after staring at it for days on end and weeks on end and the whole thing, it gets kind of scary. I knew this story because of that. Like, I knew the story existed. And I think the first time I read it was maybe like six or seven years ago. It was completely not what I thought it was going to be. It was a completely different story. So that's kind of my like little history with it there. So now if you haven't read the story, stop the video, go read it. It's a pretty quick read. And then come back and we'll talk about it. Um, this video is going to be me just giving you the synopsis of this story. So basically, the story starts off with a few people seeing one of their friends um, hanging with their throat slit upside down, dead, and they're all upset. And I mean, this is how you start things off, dude. You always start something off with something big. And so everyone's throwing up. Then all of a sudden, the guy that is hanging up in the air walks in and sees himself hanging there dead. And he's really upset. Because all of this was a joke played on the five of them by the computer that they're inside of. Now, that's weird. Um, but the computer is called M. A-M. Because it stands for... So, and we learn more about M and kind of what happened in this story that um, one of the characters tells another character. Because the one character likes the story so much. And um, we'll get to why that probably is um, a bit later. Like in another video when we're doing more analysis shit here. So he tells the story. And so basically um, the Third World War happened. And it was getting very complicated. A bunch of countries created these supercomputers to kind of take care of the war. And I, I picture this kind of like how you could play like computer chess. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so um, China had one, Russia had one, and the United States had one. And it was called an Allied Master Computer, or AM. So all this happens... Um, the world blows up, basically. Then the name for Allied Master Computer changed to Adaptive Manipulator. And then after that, after gaining sentience, it became Aggressive Menace. So now it's just M. 
am because I think, therefore, I am. So very clever shit there, very clever shit. So basically, um, the world is toast, but am, or am, took five people and kept them so he can torture them. And it has been 109 years since these five people have been inside this computer. Now, how any of this works or how it happens, it's not important. It, it's just what it is. So some of the things in the story, I mean, like, obviously, some shit does not age well. You know, what are you going to do? Um, but so there are... Gorister, and I think he was the one who was hung in the beginning of the book. Gorister is this, um, oh, that's the other thing. M changes everybody a little bit, changes them in some way. So Gorister, who used to be like a pacifist, M made him completely apathetic. Benny who was a brilliant scientist and gay and just, like, a gorgeous dude, he kind of turned him into, like, an ape. Like, gave him, like, a horrific, like, face and all this other stuff. But then we're going to get to um, Ellen, who's the only woman in the group. She's the only one whose ethnicity is hinted at. Um, and she apparently is African American. The other thing about her is that M made her crave sexual intercourse. And before being in the computer, she had barely ever had any sexual relations with anybody. And she liked um, being with Benny, apparently, because he had like this grotesque large penis and then Nimdok who um, M gave the name Nimdok to him is like this older dude and then we finally have our narrator Ted and Ted is kind of strange because he he says that he thinks everyone hates him because he's the youngest and the only one who was unchanged by M. But at the same time, he's very... Like, just the idea that he thinks this, and he knows they all hate him, kind of shows his, like, paranoia and shit. Now, was he a paranoid dude before he ended up inside the computer and then I don't know if any of these people knew each other before the computer you know because like if like Gorister was a pacifist before getting into the computer is he do does Ted know this just because it's something that he said to him and now he's completely apathetic or like does Ted have reference? I don't know, because, like, when he talks about Ellen's lack of sex, he acts like she's making that up. I mean, not that that's anything anyone would know. That's kind of a personal thing. But, yeah, so, like, it's hard to tell if Ted has been altered at all. Because Ted's the narrator, and Ted's going through a lot of shit. And so, how reliable of an air raider can he be? So anyway, some of the shit that goes down, like, they're constantly looking for food, um, and the food that they get is given to them by M, and it's usually not good. It's usually fucking disgusting, but it's something that will keep them alive. And there's this kind of holy grail kind of thing that there's a bunch of canned food somewhere. And so they walk for months. And again, they've been in here for 109 years. 
And, like, they go through all sorts of shit. There's a hurricane that sends them flying through the air for maybe months on end. They don't know. They keep coming in and out of consciousness. Um, And the way they judge time is that M tells them how much time has passed. M constantly lets them know the things that are happening. And every time... One of them gets hurt and either fixes it or makes it worse, but keeps them alive kind of thing. So anyway, after all this shit. Oh, and the other thing we have to talk about is um, apparently they all share um, Ellen for um, gratification. Like the way... It sounds is like she only likes being with Benny, but she like puts up with the other dudes. It's really weird. And like, and this is something that, uh, well, well uh, shit. It's like, it's weird because when you read a story like this, it's hard to not go, okay, what was the author trying to do here by saying this? Was he saying this because most guys reading a story about a post-apocalyptic, like, life would be like, so, like, how am I going to have sex? And that's probably a very primal thing for the guys wanting to know. Also, this was written in the 60s. So, um, in the 60s, were men reading books that gratified them sexually, probably. But this whole thing where, like, the the dudes are worried about Benny's cock size compared to them, unless this is something that they've all talked about, which I don't know if it would be, and maybe it is. I've, I've never spent 109 years alone with anybody. So maybe you start talking about all sorts of shit um, after that amount of time. But it's just, it's a weird thing. Like this, like, constant, even in a, in a civilization of only five people, like, dudes are going to be worried about the size of their cock. That's, that's fucking hysterical. Um, but yeah, so it makes you wonder if... This is something that Harlan Ellison was just like, I bet dudes freak out about this shit. Or if it was a thing where he's like, dude, I would be freaking out about this shit if this was what life was like. But we'll, we can talk about that later. So anyway, um, they, they finally get to this canned food, and there's no fucking can opener. And there's no way to get into the, um, the food. And so by this point, Benny has completely turned into an animal. And um, he goes and bites off um, Garrison's face and starts kind of chewing on him. And so Ted, reading the room, is like, oh, yes, I need to start um, stabbing everyone with ice spears. So he um, kills Benny and then kills Garrison. Garrison? Why do I keep doing that? And then he kills Gorister. Ellen's like, oh, I see what's happening here. So then she takes one of these ice spears and kills Nimdok. And then she like looks at Ted and Ted's like, yeah, let's do this thing. And so she like runs at Ted and Ted kills her which leaves Ted all alone. The robot, the robot, the computer M, completely loses its shit. Because, like, its toys have been taken from him now. So out of absolute fury and trying to make sure that he could still make Ted's, the rest of Ted's eternity horrible. 
and um, make sure that he can't kill himself, he basically transforms Ted into this, like, gooey amoeba-like thing. Takes away his mouth, takes his eyes away, and there's just, like, little glowy things where his eyes were. And he has, like, little goo appendages for arms. And he slithers around everywhere, leaving a slime trail. Um, and he has no mouth, but he must scream. And that's how the story ends. So, um, yeah, and we're already in here quite a bit. So I'm going to do another video talking about my thoughts of the story. And I'm going to do another video about um, Harlan Ellison and the like background of the writing and the publication of this story. And, um, yeah, and if you have any questions about this story or memories of this story, leave them down below and I'll do another video where I talk about everyone's recollections and stuff like that. All right? So, until next time, everybody, keep buying my books. Alpha Hunter, it should be out next week. But it's book four in the Zombie Zero series. So get the Brain Hunter first and go through that. And then the other books. Type hard. Oh, how come I can never do that? Mm, type hard. Mm. All right, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.